Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, in the studio, halfway point of the week. I've been asked more times than I can count in the last week what's going to happen with Rashi Rice. Has there been anything punitive-wise that's happening? Only the fact that he's being held, and that's the only punitive measure at the moment. You have to think that the prosecutors are still compiling evidence because there are other people involved in this circumstance as well. But Reed, when you take a look, or uh, Rice, I should say, when you take a look at the whole scope of things, the max penalty that he could get is about 10 years in prison. That is highly, highly unlikely in his case. But what happens, number one, from the state in their prosecution, and number two, from the Na- uh, National Football League, that, that remains to be seen because the NFL does have some procedures that they follow it's uh, the player conduct rule that they have, and it, well, it got Omenahu six games out last year for a domestic violence. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's still a, probably a long ways from being decided yet. Again, luckily no one was hurt, and usually the league is, or at least historically in the last few years, gone after guys when it comes down to a domestic incident. So hopefully he won't be gone long. I am thinking four games. What do you think? I'm not making a bet with you. Just, just your thought. I wouldn't be surprised if the whole season. You think it's a whole season? I don't think it's a whole season. But we will wait and Keep see. Keep in mind now, this was a dangerous act in public in which he was driving at excessive speed and caused a racing, racing in a crowded scene. You've got to, you've got to teach a lesson somewhere along the line. And I don't know. I, I hope nothing in terms of an extensive penalty comes, but I think it might. Again, I, 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 I get where you're coming from, but since nothing actually happened. That's just a, that's a, a lucky break. I know. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. If, it, if something had happened, we'd be having a different conversation. You can't. The league's not going to come down on him for something that possibly could happen. They only deal with things if they did happen. So I don't think it's going to be all year. But we did talk about the women's national championship. Tons of people watched it. What about the men's on Monday? Well, it's kind of, kind of interesting because this is the first time in history that the ladies' basketball has outdrawn the men on television. 18 wow. million people, 18,700,000 watched the women's game on Sunday. The men's game, the men's championship game, was just under 15 million. And that's, that's a big difference. Is it a surprise? Not to me, not at all. First of all, the great publicity that Caitlin Clark got as a, an, an athlete, doesn't matter what gender, but as an athlete, I think it compiled an awful lot of interest. And the fact that women don't normally watch, and that's not a knock at the gender, but they don't normally watch the men's championship game and so forth and so on. They did at both genders watching this one because of the interest involved. So no, that doesn't surprise me at all. But it's very good. It's historic for the ladies. And compiled now, they're complicated, I should say, by the fact that Tara Vandiver has... Retired at Stanford, she's the all-time winningest coach after 39 years. That's another factor in uh, women's basketball. It, it's coming on. There's no question about that. Has it achieved the massive popularity? That remains to be seen. But yes, it did outdraw the men on television this year. Last but not least, the MSU Bears are in Oklahoma to uh, play a match in Tulsa. Did they do any better than they, they have will. been? Won 12 to 4, nice. hit four home runs. Oral Roberts, the team they were playing and will play again later on this season here in Springfield, is a World Series team last year. They were one of the Elite Eight, not the same team. They've only won 12 games this year and lost 20. So the Oral Roberts team is down, no question about that. But the Bears are too, and the Bears needed that win and got it 12-4. to Come home this uh, weekend for a championship series, and that's a conference series with Illinois-Chicago. So the tee times for the Masters, what time does that kick off tomorrow? Actually, this time tomorrow, the competition will be uh, already underway. The champion, of course, the individual wearing the Masters green coat is John Rahm. He won it last year and he tees off, this is tomorrow now, at 9.30 our time. Then at 9.40, the next group up includes the number one golfer in the world, Scotty Scheffler, and Rory McIlroy. That'll have a lot of attention. Now, much of the attention, if not all of it, focuses on Tiger Woods, and apparently he is going to try to play 
And as of now, he is scheduled to tee off shortly at before 12.30 our time tomorrow, and that's noon. Again, this is all tomorrow. He'll tee off at 12.24, and he is in a threesome that includes Jason Day and Max Homa. And this is the Masters, folks. This is the first of golf's Grand Slam events in Augusta, Georgia. It is a big deal, and it all begins tomorrow. You got a lot of naps coming up in my future, which is great. Um, last night, I was laying in bed, about to fall asleep, and then all of a sudden, I just starts hearing this pop, 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 pop. And I'm like, what is, oh, it was opening night. Hammonds Field. Did they get the dub at least? They didn't need. And how about this? The Springfield Cardinals folks have started the year 4-0. and zero. Win last night 6-2. to two. And the one negative, if you can call it that, is the fact that for the first time in the four games, Springfield actually fell behind in a contest. Wichita took a 2-1 to one lead. Horrors! Fell behind. But this is a good Springfield Cardinals team. Came from behind, hit the ball very well. Crowd larger than expected and they had over 5,000 at Hammonds Field that's a good opening night crowd and it really wasn't all that pleasant the night wasn't terrible certainly but that wind was blowing in there pretty well and it, it was a little on the cool side but nonetheless the Springbirds get the win over Wichita 6-2 to two. they are scheduled to play again tonight then tomorrow right up and through uh, Sunday afternoon see what happens with the weather Royals at home and they uh, took on a you know usually pretty tough Houston Astro teams thing I, I like what, what the Royals have done so far offensively, but what I really like is a great example is the last night game where the other team just starts beating up on them and they don't give up and they come back. And you're seeing that time and time again. I know it's early, but still, it's hope. Well, there are games in previous years in which the Royals would fall behind and wouldn't come That's back. That's what I'm saying. But they did last night a 10-inning game at Kaufman Stadium, Kansas City, playing the Houston Astros. The Astros... Uh, according to the baseball pundits now, are in their last gasps of being a competitive team. In other words, they're getting long of tooth. But anyway, in the 10th inning, Cardinals, of course, have the ghost runner on second base. Both teams do in extra frames. And Salvador Perez brought home that ghost runner with the winning run. Six, uh, four to three, the Royals beat the Houston Astros. Very nice win. Kansas City is seven and four on the year in the early going. It's April, I know, but hey, they're playing much better baseball. They are so far, which is good, but we got a lot of year left. And speaking of which, Cardinals are also at home in St. Louis, facing off with the Phillies, and how they do yesterday. Got a very good pitching performance to start the game from Sonny Gray, who had been injured. Gray is the youngest of the old guys out there in the pitching rotation. He's only 34 years old. But Gray pitched five innings of shutout baseball, and the rest of the relief corps finished with shutout baseball. Kind of a little bit misleading because Philadelphia out hit St. Louis 8-7, grounded into three double plays. That is the key. That is also baseball. Cardinals win it by a score of 3 nothing, and they play again this afternoon up at Bush Stadium in the concluding game of that series. Philadelphia and St. Louis playing up in St. Louis. And you can hear that on our sister station, 105.1 The Bull. Ned, you have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.